everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. We are still in the middle of the holiday season. We've got, uh, where are my glasses? You know, I can never find them and they're on my head. <laughs> We've still got New Year's uh, coming up. But uh, it's just so cool to see all of you in our Power Tools with Thread Facebook group. They got new machines for Christmas and magnetic hoops and all kinds of cool stuff out there. People got new sewing machines. People got new uh, embroidery machines. And I was a co-conspirator on one of them. And, uh, and uh, people got new scan and cuts. And what fun. Oh, you know, if you're going to stay home, you might as well have a good time, right? Well, as my Christmas gift to you guys, uh, especially those of you who got the uh, a new scan and cut for Christmas. I have people all the time, please make a scan and cut video. Please make a scan and cut video. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I did. I sewed a tote bag. Look at this. And it says, happiness is. Isn't that precious with the little heart on the sewing machine? So I created this cut file, this SVG cut file myself, and I stitched it down using Simply Applique. I actually use the BES4 software. Simply Applique is a module of that. And then this is embroidery on here, happiness is. And I just made this little tote bag. It is fully lined. The sewing machine SVG is free. I'm gonna put it on my blog and it's free. You can have it. So. Then you can cut your own sewing machines. You can resize it in the Brother Canvas. And um, the heart actually comes from the Scan and Cut. Uh, it actually comes from Brother Canvas. I'm gonna show you, I show you how to make that and everything. Once you open the Word document from my blog, powertoolswiththread.com, there are two files embedded in this document. There is Sewing Machine SVG and Happiness Is SVG. And there are instructions down here to tell you what I am about to show you. So we need to move these files from the Word document to your computer. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the bottom of your screen to the taskbar down here. And there's a little yellow folder. You want to open that up. I am going to go to my documents folder and anywhere on a clean space, not on a folder, but anywhere, I usually go right here. I'm going to right click new and folder and I'm going to title it sewing tote bag and hit enter. And I'm going to scroll down to it and double click it and you can see the folder is empty, that's fine. Now, what I recommend you do is come up to the Word document and hit the little uh, double squares up here next to the X and that will bring the size of this window down. Click once on the sewing machine SVG and grab a hold of it with my mouse and drag it into this window. That looks like the Microsoft Edge icon. That's fine. Don't worry about that. And I'm going to come back over here and click on Happiness Is and grab that and bring it over. And there we go. That's what I need. Now you have moved these, copied them from the Word document into your computer, and now we can upload them into the Brother Canvas. I'm going to minimize the Word document by hitting the minus sign up here to log in to canvasworkspace.brother.com. You will see a icon right here for new. We're going to click that and create a new file. And the fourth icon over on the top is SVG to import SVG. I'm going to click that and it wants to know where do I want to get it from. So we're going to navigate to the sewing tote bag folder. There it is right there. I'm going to click on the sewing machine and click open and click OK. And there it is. 
highlight the sewing machine, and then you want to grab this corner down here. Don't grab the ones in the middle, the little dots in the middle. If so, you'll, you'll distort it and skew it. So grab this right down here and pay attention to these numbers. We're going to get this number right here to about eight. So I'm going to grab it in the corner, hold my mouse down, and I'm going to pull it until I get to eight. Well, it's kind of hard to get to eight exactly. See, it, it moved. I'm going to get it as close to eight as, well, there's exact. Now let's say you have a hard time with that and, and it's at 8.4. Make sure that it's highlighted. Come up here into the properties icon, which is right next to the trash can. Click the properties. And then right here, make sure maintain aspect ratio is checked. And right here, we're going to click on that. I'm going to hit delete and put a zero, and then I'm going to hit enter. And you probably didn't see it move because it was so minute, but if I click off of this and then click back on the sewing machine, you can see that it's at eight now. That's how you can exactly change your sizes in the Brother Canvas. Now I want to open the happiness is. So I'm going to click on SVG again and choose file and happiness is open and okay we're going to do the exact same thing and it's right up here but okay so if you cannot get to it you can always move the sewing machine out of the way i'm going to click on this and i'm going to move it down what i want to do is I want it in here. So I'm going to put it up here in this corner of the base of the machine and drag it nice and large. And I'm going to just make sure it's fairly centered. This doesn't have to be exact. So the reason I'm doing it like this is so that I can get an idea of the scale of the letters. If I wanted to go bigger, I could. Just like that. And that's the only reason we want that there. Now see if I click on it again, the sewing machine is in the way. So I'm going to move the sewing machine out of the way. Now I'm going to click on this. I'm happy with the scale of this. And I'm going to bring it down here because I'm going to cut it out of a different kind of fabric than the sewing machine. I'm going to put the sewing machine right here. And I'm going to put happiness is right here. And then I'm going to come over here to basic, and this is shapes. I'm going to click on basic, and I'm going to scroll down until I find my heart. And there's different kinds of hearts here. There's some with little jagged edges. So I want the smooth heart, and I just clicked on it, and it popped up. And I want it to be a little fatter, like a little fatter heart. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit, and I'm going to bring it in here and make sure it fits because that's where I want to stitch at. And it doesn't matter if it's in the exact spot. We're going to move it. I think I like that. Maybe a little smaller. If you're going to change the size, this is where you want to do it. It's easier to do it in the canvas than it is to do it on the machine. You can do it on the machine, but this is easier. Okay, I'm happy with that heart scale. I'm happy with this. The heart is an exact shape all the way around, so I don't have to do anything to that. Um, happiness is, I need to invert it or mirror it. Actually, not invert. I need to mirror this. I'm going to click on it to select it. I want to come up to edit and flip horizontal. There we go. I'm going to move it just a little bit closer over here. So we, our heart has lots of room. And then the sewing machine, select it and edit and flip horizontal. If you forget to do this in the canvas, you can do it in the machine as well. Move this over here. I think this will be fine. 
So if we go a little bit bigger, you can see the little dotted lines on the mat. And where the darkest dotted lines are is a six inch quadrant. So I've got a little bit of room up here. I'm going to bring this up and bring it over. And so th this right here is a six inch quadrant. And I can tell I need at least a nine inch piece of fabric for the sewing machine. I'm going to go ahead and use a nine inch piece of fabric. So I'm going to make my sewing machine fabric nine by nine. That way I make sure it's going to cut and stick. Sometimes you want to leave a little bit of extra fabric around on your, um, around your cut file to make sure it adheres and doesn't get pulled up. Happiness is if you click on the element that you want to cut, you can see in the bottom of the screen, it is 1.19 by 7.24. So I'm going to use a two by eight and a half inch strip of fabric to cut out the letters for happiness is. And my heart, I'm going to move it a little bit over here. It looks like I can get away with a, a three by three inch square for my heart. Should work. I've written my numbers down and now I am ready to send it to my scanning computer. And I'm going to come back down here. Everything looks good. It, it doesn't matter exactly where these are right now because we're going to scan the mat with the fabric on it into the scan and cut. So I'm going to go right now and back my fabric with heat bond. Before I do that, I'm going to go download. I have my scan and cut turned on and it is connected to my router. And I'm going to click Scan and Cut Transfer. And that's done. And now I want to get my embroidery files for Simply Applique. And I'm going to click Download again. And I'm going to download this FCM file to PC. And there it is. That's, that went to my Downloads folder. So I'm going to come over here to my folder and you can see we're still in sewing tote bag. So I'm going to scroll until I see my downloads. There it is. And right here, hover over it and right click, open in new window. And there it is. There's the FCM file. I'm going to move it and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it into sewing tote bag and I'm going to right click on it, rename sewing tote bag dot FCM and enter. There we go. Okay, at the scan and cut, now we want to retrieve our data from the Canvas cloud. And so this is the home screen. I have the SDX 225 and I will be using the fabric mat, the one, the gold fabric mat, and I have a gold fabric blade. So we're going to retrieve data and it wants to know where from, from the machine, from the cloud, from a USB, or maybe you have a cable to your computer. We're going to touch from the cloud. Once here you can see the design and if you did not do a mirror of it in the cloud, you would go to edit and it will automatically select an object and you would go object edit and here's your mirror button right here. Well we don't want that. I'm just going to click OK and click OK to go back. I'm going to just approximately put my fabric where I see that the pieces are going to be on the screen. So here's my 9x9 nine nine piece of little spool fabric. I'm going to put my little heart fabric right down here at the bottom and I'm going to put my words fabric right here. Now the best thing to do 
is to get yourself a little scraper. I can link to this below. I got this one on Amazon. You can use any kind of scraper. I've used my Pampered Chef scraper. Whatever works. But you really want to make sure you have your fabric adhered well to the mat. If you have a standard mat, you're going to want to get a fabric support sheet in order to be able to have it sticky enough for fabric to stick to it. Brother does not recommend that you put your fabric on here with paper on it, meaning the heat and bond, because they don't want people to put the fabric paper side down. If you put your fabric paper side down, you'll ruin your mat because your paper will not come off the mat. So you always want to have paper side up. We're gonna put the mat and load it into the machine. And to do that, there is a little button right here. It's blue and it has a bar across it. And that is to scan. I need to load my mat, that would help. When you load your mat, always make sure to snug it right here against this particular edge. And we've hit the scan and now start. Right, now here on the screen we can see that the sewing machine is going to cut just fine the heart I'm gonna to touch it and move it just a little bit and the words I'm gonna to touch them and move them just a little bit so now I know everything is going to cut just fine okay I'm gonna click OK it says please select cut and start. It's going to cut everything out in two minutes or less. All done. Tell it okay and eject the mat. Now we've got a lot of little pieces that we need to be careful of here in the lettering, but it looks like they all cut pretty cleanly. I'm going to grab the edge and hold down. Look how nice that peeled up like that. And the sewing machine. Be very careful not to tug. You don't want to stretch your fabric at all. That came out perfect. Oh, that came out so cute. Look at that. That's going to look adorable. Okay, let's try some Simply Applique to get this onto our tote bag. On this computer, I am using the BES4 Dream Edition and Simply Applique is a module inside of that. So if you have Simply Applique software, the only thing that's going to really look different right now is that this little icon up here in the upper left corner will be different than the one that I'm looking at. But the process is all the same. The button should be the same. We want to pull up that FCM file that we created in the Brother Canvas. So up here on this top icon, once you open it up, you're going to want to click on this and choose Import FCM. And I am going to go back, let's see, to my documents, my sewing tote bag. There is sewing tote bag FCM and open. Now, all of this needs to be flipped. So I'm going to come up here to the top menu and choose Arrange. And I'm going to click the Flip button. There we go. While the happiness is cut out just fine, I think I'd rather stitch it out 
as an embroidery font as opposed to doing applique. I think it's just going to look cleaner if I do that. So I am going to highlight this and just hit delete. And I'm going to click my sewing machine and up here in the Arrange tab at the top, click Center, and that will move it to the center of the screen. And then I'm going to click the heart and make sure I have the little hand, and I'm going to put it exactly where I want it. And I think that that looks just fine. I've kind of visually got this dotted line going straight through the middle of it, so it looks like it's pretty good. I really like that. Now over here in the sequence view, what you can do is highlight artwork and right click and you want to go to rename and I'm going to put sewing machine and right here I'm going to click on artwork and right click, rename and heart. Right now, this really is not any kind of embroidery file. I can, on my sewing machine, I want it to be black, and black is default up here. And this one, I want to be, uh, I want it to be like a pink. That'll work. So now I want to highlight everything and you're going to come up to tools and over here this last icon says convert to applique and if you look what it did was it only converted to applique the sewing machine and not the heart that's not what we want so click off of it go control z and now it's not applique anymore you want to be sure to click each individual object you can hold the control key down and so I've clicked sewing machine and I've clicked heart. Now both of these are selected and now convert to applique. There we go. So you can tell by the stitching that it has changed to applique. So we need to decide what kind of stitching we want on the sewing machine and on the heart. Well, I'm not sure. I might use a satin stitch around the heart, but the sewing machine, I want it to be a blanket stitch. So I'm just gonna choose blanket and down here, come down to the bottom and click apply. And in here, you have a stitch length of 2.0. These are all default settings. If you have some very, very narrow, tiny stitches, you may want to change this, but I'm going to leave it at default and click apply. And you can see that it has now changed to a blanket stitch. I think I like that as a satin stitch. I'm going to make this a pretty bright pink. And I'm going to tell it up here at the top, I'm going to go click this, save as, and Go to libraries and documents and tote bag and change it from paste setter outline files to the brother baby lock. And I'm going to call it sewing machine part and save. The current design does not fit the current hoop. Do you still want to continue? Yes, that's fine. So now I'm going to open up and in Brilliance, I'm going to click my little folder down here. There's my sewing machine heart. I'm just going to grab it and drag it in. Okay, now that I have this design pulled into in Brilliance, I can see the size. And that's what I'm really just looking for is like a template. So I'm going to come up here to A to create lettering and I want to come over here and choose 
Designs by Juju's Evangeline. I really think that'll look real pretty. And I'm going to use the one inch. And down here in the text box, I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to type happiness is space dot 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 and hit enter. Perfect. And not on a green box because you'll move just an individual letter. But if you you want to make sure this is highlighted here, grab just the lettering and get an idea of how that's going to fit. From here, you can change the scale or maybe you want a different font or something like that. So this looks great. I think that's going to be real good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the sewing machine heart because it won't fit all in the multi-needle at one time. So I'm going to hit delete and then I'm going to highlight my letters and I'm going to come over here to this icon up at the top and center in hoop. And that's perfect. So I'm going to go file, save stitch file as, and I'm going to call it happiness is happiness is that's better okay and this one I'm gonna go file save as and I want to go to my USB drive sewing machine heart and I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna tell it okay doesn't fit the hoop. That's okay. I haven't chosen a hoop. Yes, that's good. So, but I know it will fit in the hoop because I saw that over in Imbrilliance. I could choose a hoop if I wanted to, but I don't need to. Okay, we are ready to go to the machine. Because I have dense uh, lettering, I am going to use a cutaway stabilizer. And that way we'll get even though I'm using canvas, we'll still get as few puckers as possible. So cutaway is always best if you have heavy satin stitching. One of my favorite alignment tools in the embroidery tool shed I have is this uh, hoop mat from the Designs and Machine Embroidery. I can see the lines through the stabilizer. And then what I do is I will fold, fold back my crosshair on the fold and kind of, I can see it. You guys can't, but I can. I'm just going to line it up pretty close. It does not have to be exact. I'm floating this. So even though I have... Put down some KK2000 from Selkie. I'm going to go ahead and take some pins and just make sure nothing gets crazy on me and tries to move when I'm not looking. And you want to make sure those pins are well out of the sewing field. Last thing you want to do is hit a pin with your embroidery machine. Okay, I think that's gonna work just fine. Ready to go to the machine. Okay, at the machine, I have put my USB drive in and I am looking for, there it is. It says it's too large for the hoop. Rotate it 90 degrees, that's fine. It comes in upside down, that happens all the time. I'm gonna hit set and I'm going to hit rotate and 90 degrees and that's going to flip it actually 180 I'm going to tell it okay and I'm going to edit end and now here's the three spools I need to change my thread colors it will tell you what each thread is going to be in this box right here there's a little hand right here and that's a stop and because this is applique I'm going to need it to do a stop so the first stitch it has as a one and I want for that to be number five and five has a little anchor and six and seven because I have permanently assigned spools five six and seven as uh, black white and red but I want it to be five 
I'm going to go down to the next one and then I want it to stop so the little hand goes up there and I'm going to change that to five that so the first one is the placement stitch or what uh, you, you will hear it called applique, uh, applique position but that's the placement stitch and this is going to be number uh, also number five and that is going to be the tack down and I don't need that to stop after that because the shape is already cut I don't have to trim it and number three is going to be the blanket stitch and I want that to also be five number four is a placement stitch and I want that to be color number nine and then I want it to stop. We're going to have to put the heart on and I want that color number nine. And then I don't need to trim it and the satin stitch is also going to be color number nine and I'm going to tell it okay. I want to bring you in real close. I need to change thread color number nine. It was a teal so I'm going to pull it. I have tied it off in the back. So I'm pulling this through and I'm going to trim. So number nine needs to be threaded into the needle. And what you do is you come over here and I'm going to touch this button right here. It has a needles in the hoop and it wants to know what position I want to go to. I want to go to number nine. And now I want to thread number nine's needle. So I'm going to press this needle button, needle threader button right here. And I want you to watch what happens. I'm going to hold the thread kind of out of the way. And a little arm came down and I'm going to put the thread underneath the two little prongs and then under that little foot right there and up and around there is a little slot here for number nine I'm going to bring it around and pull that down I'm going to hit so now you can see the thread is under the two little prongs there is a tiny tiny hook through the hole of the needle the eye of the needle. I'm going to press the needle threader button one more time. We are ready to go. I'm going to tell it okay. And embroidery. And I'm going to hit the lock button and go. Now it's going to do the placement stitch for the heart. Now I'm going to go iron on the heart. I don't need to do the tack down stitch for the heart since it's ironed on so I can hit needle plus minus and I can jump to the final stitch tell it okay and hit that and go it's all finished remove the hoop from the machine so now it really does not matter where I place this in the hoop because I'm going to use the camera system I'm just going to place it 
you know, I'm just kind of, I, I am looking at the lines under the stabilizer. I'm going to stitch this, pin this. Come back up here to home. Okay, to cancel the current selection. Okay. Back to my USB. And now i got to find happiness is. And they are in alphabetical order, so I need to scroll down just a little bit. There it is. And set. Rotate. 90 degrees. There we go. Make sure the orientation is right. Tell it okay. And up here's the little camera. I'm going to tell it okay. And it's going to scan the project. Well, that looks pretty good, almost like it is. It needs to rotate just a little bit. Um, I'm going to rotate it just a little bit, just at a glance. It looks like it's farther away over on this end than it does that end. So I'm going to touch rotate. And I'm going to go one degree. There we go. That looks pretty good. Back just That's good. And I'm going to nudge it up. Nudge it down. You can also touch it with your finger. All right, now I need to get it centered between the two edges and I'm just gonna eyeball that. I could have made marks on um, the fabric with um, the friction pens, friction markers, I didn't want to. Y'all, that looks pretty good, I'm liking it. I think it'll be fine. Maybe one more nudge up. I think it's fine. I'm going to tell it okay. And I'm going to tell it edit end. And the color I want to use is number 10. So I'm going to touch these thread spools and 10 and okay. Embroidery. And we're ready to go. So lock and go. Go sell something. Bye.